This Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him, and Jesus went to his house and sat down to eat. Come along, children, off you go. You heard me, go. They get into all the mischief they can, but they're good sons. What is she doing here? I don't know. Prophet, he would know who this woman is who is touching him. He would know what kind of sinful life she lives. I know who this woman is, Simon. Let me tell you something. There are two men who owed money to a moneylender. One owed him 500 silver coins and the other 50. Neither of them can pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Which one then will love him more? I suppose that it would be the one who was forgiven more. You are right. You see, this woman, I came into your home. You gave me no water for my feet. Yet she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You did not welcome me with a kiss. But since I came, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You provided no olive oil for my head. Yet she has anointed my feet with perfume. I tell you then, the great love she has shown proves that her many sins are forgiven. But whoever is forgiven a little shows only a little love. Your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then something amazing happened to two of the disciples. They excitedly came back to the others. The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. We didn't recognize him. Not on the road. But when he broke bread, then we knew him. At Emmaus, how strange he should go there. Peace be with you. Why are you troubled? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see I have. 
These are the very things I spoke to you about while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the writings of the Prophets and the Psalms had to come true. This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, the message of repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I myself will send you the one my father has promised. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual sense. We see this in how he lived his life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place, and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus said, No one can take my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. The life of Jesus not only fulfilled the writings of the prophets, but also confirmed the truth of God's holy word. The prophets declared, The word of the Lord is flawless, your word, O Lord, is eternal. Jesus himself said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way, and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned, and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so he sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death, and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins, and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims, nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. When people are ready to become followers of Jesus, the Messiah, they may speak to him in a simple prayer. Perhaps you are ready now to open your life to God. If so, you may join in the following prayer to him, silently, in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess and repent of my sins. 
I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. as I become one of your followers. Amen. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them, and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world.